Look, if you told me months ago that Chucky would end up killing somebody through gallons of vomit and that one of his main characters is a middle school kid that watches Pokemon doing the nasty online? I'd clap and go give me that damn show right now. Hey guys, Chucky Boy has risen here. We are finally at the time where we get the Chucky TV series. We just had the first episode premiere last night, Death by Misadventure. What I'm gonna be doing here for you guys along with every other week as they continue to release all eight episodes of the Chucky TV series, I'm gonna be giving you my episode one breakdown, pointing out Easter eggs you might have missed, speculating to what all this means in the Chucky world, as well as just giving you my general thoughts and theories on whether I'm liking the show or not. But I'm gonna need you Chucky fans to also leave me your opinions down below were you satisfied with this first episode how do you think it kind of compares to the movies right now did it exceed your expectations did it disappoint you be honest here where's chucky lovers but I'm not afraid to criticize the boy. Real quick before we get into things, I want to give a huge shout out to Trick or Treat Studios as they were the ones to send me a little goodie box in preparation for the Chucky TV series. I unboxed it on TikTok, but they're also the same company where I buy all my Halloween Michael Myers masks. They even have some Chucky wrapping paper if you want to get ready for Christmas. It's just really awesome to know that they're fans of the show and I wanted to give them a shout out for that. All right, so right off the bat with the first episode of the Chucky TV series, I gotta say, I'm really enjoying it so far. I really like the feel of the show. As of right now, it's not completely giving me Child's Play 2 vibes as that's what they were trying to aim for when making the show right now it still kind of feels like curse and cult to chucky but that's not even a bad thing i actually really like those two entries at the same time though i feel like it is a better version of those movies at least with the time we're getting to take to get to know some of these characters and chucky going about because come on they did not waste any time with chucky moving around and doing his thing because that was one of my fears with the tv series that they try to be a little cheap and only show chucky rarely but no with this being only eight episodes it looks like they use their time and money wisely here and we're gonna get plenty of mischievous stuff going around but let's start going kind of shot by shot through this episode and catching some things we might have caught so the opening of this episode starts off with something that kind of reminds me of Sita Chucky if you remember the opening of Sita Chucky also starts off with this POV shot of Glenn going out and about of killing we do find out at the end of this episode though it's just young Charles Lee Ray set in 1965 meeting his mother that's one thing that'll be a big central part of this show I mean we even see after Jake Weber picks up Chucky from the yard sale he's listening to the hack and slash podcast from his school crush Devin Lopez who's kind of filling us the audience in that this is the hometown of notorious killer Charles Lee Ray and that recently in the town 11 bodies have been found dead because well Chucky's back in town y'all from there we start to get a little bit more information on Jake Weber we see he is an artist and purchased the Chucky doll as part of a sculpture he's making the reason we find out he is such a big artist though is because his mother who has now passed away was also an artist and I guess he just wants to pay homage to her even though his father Played by Devin Sawa here is not a big fan of it. And if anything, I think is a metaphor for all the toxic Chucky haters that hate the fact that our new main character is gay. Junior, stop it. What? It's the 21st century. It's cool to be gay now. Would you give it a rest? He's 13 years old. He doesn't know what he is. I love that Don Mancini included a character like this because it's kind of self-aware and he knew he was going to get some backlash from the people who can't stand this. Also, I do want to quickly mention it is about this time frame where we get the opening title sequence for Chucky that is a bunch of other dolls mixed in to make the word Chucky. Awesome opening sequence, short, sweet, creepy, and to the point, I'm gonna love seeing that every episode. We then meet some more family members of Jake Weber, particularly his cousin named Junior and his uncle and aunt, kind of revealing the fact to us that Devin Sawa's character is a twin, which has caused a lot of Chucky speculation to wonder, is Chucky returning to his hometown because there's some sort of unknown relative that we don't know about? Don't you be forgetting when Chucky went ahead and had a little spanky panky with Tiffany, he gave birth to twins, Glenn and Glenda. Again, just speculation for now not enough detail to know but here is kind of one of my iffy negatives so far with the show is the character of junior because the man just flip-flops around a lot like throughout this whole dinner table scene he was picking on his cousin for obviously being gay by bringing up the fact over and over but then when we get to the school and he's being picked on by his girlfriend named lexi taylor that right now other than the father is my least favorite character and i can't wait for chucky to stab her up but when lexi is bullying jake that's when junior's like whoa you're taking it a little too far but then he goes back to being mean to him throughout the rest of the episode it's like make up your mind junior but moving forward with the show here, we do eventually see the abusive side of Jake's father where he's tired of hearing all these comments about his son's sexuality and thinks it's all linked to his artistry and his doll sculpture, smashing it up in what was a real heartbreaking scene because I can only imagine that statue took forever to build and also being a really great reason now for why Jake would take that doll to school because when I was looking at the trailers, I'm like, why is this kid taking Chucky to school? Do you want to be bullied more, kid? But it's because he finds out that these Chucky dolls are worth a lot of money, so he's trying to 
protect his investment before his dad smashes that up. So I get that now. And was it just me or was anyone else getting some weird vibes from the teacher that Jake had in his science class? No, 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 I'm not talking about them kind of weird vibes. Although, if she rolls that way, I'm ready for you, Mrs. Kettlewell. I think it's just the fact that she has orange hair and I'm just desperately trying to find Glenn and Glenda in this show, hoping that they appear. But I just got the triggering thought that something was up with her whenever she was punishing Lexi and then she turned off the lights to the room and closed her in with a Chucky doll. It just kind of felt like maybe she knows something. From there, the show started building up the romance between Jake and Devin's character, which I thought was really sweet and nice. I kind of like their banter back and forth. It doesn't feel too Riverdale or teenage angst where I'm like, oh, this is Chucky. I want to see some stabbing. It's like, no, we need some character development. So I thought this was good, but then Devin really messed it up when he asked Jake to be part of his podcast to talk about bullying. Man, I would have been offended too. As that's happening though, we do get to see that the teacher is locking away the Chucky doll. Now this really reminded me of the scene from Child's Play 2 where the teacher took away Andy's doll and locked it away. Only this time Jake asked the teacher to lock it away for him. From there we see that Jake is now back home and is responding to a lot of people who want to buy his Chucky doll since he posted it online to sale, giving out his number to one specific person who does not waste any time to call him, and every Chucky fan should know that is the voice of Alex Vincent, aka Andy Barkley, from the original Child's Play movies. Now, I say this with all love and respect to Alex Vincent, because I'm happy to have him part of the show. The voice acting through the phone was not doing it for me, okay? I'm just being honest, it sounded very much read from the page, and some of that line delivery wasn't exactly perfect. Be very careful with that doll, do you understand? Have you checked his batteries? But still, the fact that Andy Barkley is in the real world constantly checking up on Chucky dolls that are posted online to sell because he knows he needs to get rid of them, I think that's great for the character and I can't wait for him to finally show up. When Jake confirms that his name is Chucky, but also when the doll shows back up into his life, he takes Andy's advice of checking the batteries like Karen did in the original Child's Play. Also want to point out here that when he's doing internet research on Charles Lee Ray, he basically finds out information from the first three Child's Play movies. As you can see, the first couple of lines here is about the first movie, then we have the teacher that dies that's from child's play 2 and then the ceo of play pal that's from the opening of child's play 3 leading me to my favorite scene out of this entire episode is chucky crashing the talent show at jake's school and this is what i love about the tv series they are not holding back on chucky he is full throttle i thought they were going to be real slow with it but just seeing the way he whispers to jake ears like follow my lead do as i say and then the other thing that i think they're actually getting perfect in this show is blending in chucky's humor with being creepy the things i kind of hated later on with with Bride of Chucky and Seed of Chucky is that they did not know how to balance the humor that Chucky has and he became more of a comedian and less threatening. Where here, I thought they did a good job of invading the personal privacy of Lexi. Boom! <laughs> Here's Lexi's search history. She's into Pokemon porn. We're not so different, you and I. Showing that she's a cheater, her weird Google search history. Like Chucky is diabolical and just ruined the popular girl's reputation in one sitting. That was freaking awesome. But two other things you want to catch from this talent show is Chucky did bring up the fact that Jake's Aunt Bree has a secret. At first I thought maybe this is the person that Chucky is going after and the reason he returned to his hometown, some sort of connection with his aunt. But it could just be a reference to the fact that Chucky listened into her phone call earlier in the episode and that's the secret that Chucky knows about now. The other thing I want you guys to also notice is that Lexi's younger sister starts to smile and stare at Chucky, almost looking up to him like, hey, my sister who's a bully to me, you just stood up to her, I love you, I want this doll. And the last time Chucky was owned by a little girl named Allison, he possessed her in the movies and used her body to do some killing until someone eventually killed her. We'll see if Chucky repeats that same faith with this little girl. Eventually leading us to Jake going back home and his father knowing that he's been expelled from school from his little ventriloquist act with Chucky having a big confrontation about Jake's sexuality and how the father just doesn't like that. I know some of y'all think it's force or an agenda but I feel like this is the stuff that makes the show a lot more interesting and compelling because there are people out there dealing with these same kind of situations and I think it's really cool for the show to tackle this stuff. But here's also where we get the setup for Chucky's big throw up kill as we see that he chugged down the father's entire bottle of whiskey so when he goes down to check on the power and Chucky's right there ready to just vomit it all out as he 
he electrocutes the dad to death. Now I completely understand everybody who thought this was really silly and dumb, especially being one of our first big kills for the show. And I'll admit I'm even 50-50 on it because while I thought the throwing up was weird, I think it is unique and different and kind of in line with Chucky's personality. The thing that made it more silly is when you kind of see Devin Sawa get electrocuted and he looks like some sort of actor at Six Flags. That's no offense or anything to Devin Sawa. I think he's doing a really good job acting wise. I guess it just must be a little weird trying to pretend like you're electrocuted. And I do imagine this kill is a callback to the electrocution scene from the first Child's Play. But when the cops eventually show up, one of them being the mother of Devin Lopez, the love interest for our main character, she really seems to be suspicious of Jake Weber and for good reason, letting the death go for now as an accident, but wanting to keep an eye on Jake as he seems a little suspicious. I also am loving through these interactions is that Jake, although he kind of is 50-50 on um, knowing that Chucky is alive, knows that if he starts blaming the doll for all this stuff, they'll put him in a mental asylum right away. So he just kind of has to play along with the lie and come up with reasons for why some stuff is happening. Leading us to the end of the show where Jake will be for the remaining of the season with his aunt and uncle in their big gigantic house as we get another call back to the original Child's Play almost line for line where Jake Weber is trying to threaten Chucky to come to life. But before he can even throw him in that fireplace, Chucky smacks him and comes to life talking to Jake. And it really feels like they're going to be turning Jake into a villain or that he'll be teeter-tottering, letting the bullying that's happening around him turn him as evil as Chucky. I kind of like that idea. I don't think it'll last. And I think by the end of the season, Jake will learn his ways and not go full evil. But I think this is a refreshing turn of pace, especially since you don't even see him being that sad about his father's death, which I also may add, I love the joke that Chucky did here when we thought he was describing his a-hole father, but he was actually talking about the cat. I know an asshole when I see one. After my mom died, he just, he couldn't deal. Oh, I thought we were talking about the cat. That was hilarious. But that is just episode one of the Chucky TV series. Like I said, guys, I'm liking it so far. Yeah, it has a couple of hiccups here and there, and it's a little silly and goofy at parts, but I think it still fits in line with the previous movies, and I'm really intrigued to see what the rest of the story has to offer. Let me know what you guys think down below. Don't forget to check back into the channel every week as we recap each episode. But as always, my name is Chucky Boy. Take care.